to Petey Chops was his name, who was a soldier, a made man in the Gambino crime family, to, uh, to be under him. However, Petey Chops never reported to Greg De Palma. Uh, he claimed he was constantly being watched by the cops. He was under investigation. He's doing this. But meanwhile, he ran a million dollar bookmaking operation in the Bronx. So of course, making all that money, Greg De Palma wasn't getting any, and that angered him very much. <laughs> So Greg De Palma says, you know what, I'm going to look for this guy and I'm going to straighten him out and I'm going to tell him that I need him to start reporting, more importantly, with those envelopes that are due me. So he finds out through the network that he, Petey Chops, every Monday goes with his gumad, which is his girlfriend, to, um, goes to Bloomingdale's. I guess he sits down at the buffet table while the girlfriend spends the money. So he knew that 6 o'clock, so sure enough, he goes, that day, he goes, we're going to find this Petey Chops. So myself, Greg De Palma, a capo in the Gambino crime family, and Robert Vaccaro, who became his acting capo, a made guy, take off, and we're going to Bloomingdale's. Now, when we get there, quarter to six, we're waiting. We had just finished eating, so we, you know, even the buffet didn't turn us on at the time. So we're sitting there, six o'clock goes. Then 6.15, we said, all right, this guy's not showing up. So I guess the intelligence wrong was bad. So as we're walking out of Bloomingdale's, now bear in mind, this is February 21st. This is President's Day in Westchester in White Plains, New York, Bloomingdale's. So this is now 6 o'clock. So picture, place is pretty crowded. Well, as we're walking out, the three of us, up ahead we see Petey Chops walking towards Greg, not only with his girlfriend, but with another girl. So... Right away, he sees Greg. I see his face like kind of shocked. And Greg, he comes over and he kisses Greg on the cheeks because, you know, he's a capo. He doesn't kiss. He gets kissed, you know. So he kisses and then he tells the girls, go powder the nose, go inside. He's got to talk to the guy. Well, Rob Vicar and I pull over to the side and we're watching this exchange. Well, the exchange started getting a little heated. Greg De Palma is telling the guy, I don't care. You got to start reporting. This guy is saying, I can't, you know, I'm being watched. I don't need any trouble and all that. He said, no, you don't understand. you got to start showing up. Now, I want you to meet somebody. He goes, I don't want to meet anybody. you got to meet this guy. He's a friend of ours. A friend of ours is the term to use when you introduce one made guy to another made guy. So he calls Robert Vaccaro over. He says, I told you I don't want to meet this guy. He says, I don't want to meet him. you got to meet this guy. He's the acting skipper now. You're going to be reporting to him. And more importantly, he's friends with the boss because he was friends with Arnold Scutieri. So he says, I don't care who he knows. And of course, he's using all kinds of expletives. I don't care who he knows, what he knows. I am meeting him. Get lost. Well, he's mouthing off to the guy. Now, Robert Vaccaro had a trigger, hair, hair trigger temper. He looks over and he sees these Costa Boda candlestick holder, which I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. It's like a solid candlestick that weighs like a dumbbell. I mean, literally weighs like five or 10 pounds, right? He's telling the guy, shut your mouth. He says, you be, be quiet. And Greg's jumping on. He goes, you shut up. All of a sudden, he grabs the guy. goes, oh, you're a tough guy, huh? He grabs his Costa Boda, hits this guy, cracks him over the head. And literally, you heard, you heard like a melon pop, you know, like a melon drops on the ground, you hear, pop. And then blood's gushing. This guy just, woo, goes right down. He's on the wall. He's bleeding all over the place. He goes to hit him again. I grab the candle holder from him. I says, come on, Robbie, let's get out of here. We're going to take a pinch. You crazy? Come on, leave this guy. He's a punk. Let's go. Oh, no, the hell with it. Go ahead, tough guy. Get up, tough guy. Meanwhile, the guy, you know, just got the canaries going around his head. He don't know what's going on. So all of a sudden, we're getting ready to leave, and the guy comes up, and he goes, what did you do that for? I know he's bleeding, and what did you do that for? I didn't do anything wrong. He says, hey, yeah, you were mouthing off. You got a big mouth, Greg tells him. He says, and, and then the guy goes, and you, what did you hit me to Robert? Robert goes, yeah, hit you, and he grabs a knife. Now he's going to stab him. I'm thinking he's going to stab him in the eye or he's going to stab him in the heart. So then I said, threw the knife down. I said, come here, Bob, let's get out of here. So we go down the escalator. Petey Chops stumbling, coming over to us, saying, oh, what did you hit me? I didn't do nothing, you know. And all of a sudden, he moves me around, bleeds all over my coat, you know. He moves you, spins me around because he was a little guy. He spins me around. Next thing you know, he's down. Robert says, stay away from me. He hits him, knocks him out. The guy falls on the step as he's going down the escalator, right? And I'm sitting there, and I'm going, I, I can't believe this has happened. And sure enough, the security's all out now, waiting for us. So Greg De Palma doesn't miss a lick. He says, right eye, he turns around, and he goes, hey, that guy just fell down the steps. He's going to sue you guys. 
you know? So, so, so we, so as he's getting down, he's going to fall off. I picked the guy up and shook him. I said, listen, you jerk. I said, you better get out of here. You're going to get hurt. And the guy, oh, get out of here. And I pushed him. We go back. Now I get in the car. It all comes clear to me. I'm saying to myself, all right, I think I made a big mistake here. I says, number one, I'm worrying about taking a pinch. Wise guys don't care about taking pinch. They love going to jail. They don't care. And to them, it's like, what? So you go to jail, you visit old friends, you do six months, say, you catch up, what's going on? You eat super sad, mozzarella, you have a good time in jail. Right? So that didn't scare the guy. Number two is, why didn't I give him a couple of licks? Why didn't I kick this guy? Why didn't I punch this guy? Because, hey, he was uh, insulting my capo. I should have been all over this guy like white on rice. But instead, I didn't do it because, you know, those are moments in FBI's when you work as an agent where we're in the business of, you know, preventing crime, not creating crime. So if this guy, if I would have hit this guy, I would have killed him. If Ravi would have hit him, he would have killed him. So from that moment on, I was a little concerned, that, and especially the ride home, because we had to ride back to the, that I'm thinking to myself, because Greg De Palma is saying, Robert, he says, you got to go on record with this. You can't touch another made guy, because in part of the so-called mafia rules, one made man cannot touch another made man. You can't hit him, because otherwise the sentence could be dead. So Greg De Palma says, you go on record tomorrow first thing in the morning. You tell this guy was acting like a jerk. And, you know, you, you go on record. But don't worry about it, because if he has to make a complaint, he has to go through me, the captain. And I'll make sure that doesn't go anywhere. So sure enough, Greg De Palma, as he's leaving, he tells Petey Chops, you be there first thing tomorrow or the next day. You hear me? Well, the next day passed, he didn't show up, which angered Greg. But the following day, Petey Chop shows up to meet us. He's got this huge bandage on his head, but he came with a stuff full of envelope money. Mm. And that's the rule. Florida, I'm on the phone. Usually I operate it with the speakerphone while I, you know, play with the computer or whatever. And it would be always the same question. I'd like to make reservations to go to Miami. Sir, what is your name? So I would use Manny Fernandez. Then I would come back the next week and say, I got to go to Atlantic City. What's your name? You know, Joey Pots and Pans. How about this guy, <laughs> Vinny Bag of Donuts? So, my daughter's hearing this. One day my daughter walks up to me and says, hey, Daddy, you know, because what is your name, Daddy? <laughs> so, I, so I told her, I said, listen, sweetheart, I, I'll always be Daddy to you. That's all you have to worry about. But that's the juggling of names and all that. It was crazy. And I even add the fact that the most insane thing that happened to me was I called a living La Vida Loca, you know, Ricky Martin, because <laughs> I'm sitting with the mobsters one day for lunch. I'm having lunch with them up in Westchester. Then I drive down and I go work the Asian organized crime case. Then I go... Same place in Atlantic City, worked the public corruption case. Then I get a call from Hollywood, Florida. So I, I drive my car to Newark Airport, right, fly off to um, Hollywood, spend there a couple of days, come back, land at the airport, grab my bags, walk out, look at the parking lot. I'm at Kennedy Airport. I didn't even know where I was. So I had to call my wife, who nagged me all the way home, saying, this is it. You're done with this. <laughs> You don't even know where you are, who you are, you're done. And I said, oh, geez, I need this, you know? 